All right. So I have one hack that is going to not only save you from overwhelming your team, it's going to help increase their productivity and help them prioritize what actually has to get done so that at the end of the week, you're actually accomplishing the things you were hoping to get done. What I'm talking about today is called projects versus routines. And it is a little strategy, a simple strategy that helps our clients really organize what is going on in the business. Okay. So let's just talk about what you're probably doing as a small business owner with your team right now. Okay. You're most likely a visionary. So that means you come up with ideas all day long, right? And as you come up with an idea, you might tag them in the project management software and say, Hey, would love for you to get this done. You might shoot them an email with, Hey, could you do X, Y, Z today? Um, you might text them. You might call them, right? You might be doing all of the above. And what is happening is this person you're delegating to, they are already holding all of the things you gave them. And then you just keep throwing more and more and more on. And what's happening is they see this massive pile of things to do and they don't know where to start. Because when you talk and you give an idea, everything feels urgent. How accurate does that sound? I work with hundreds of small business owners, and most of them are doing this when it comes to delegation, okay? So here is the simple hack that is going to clean this up and remove the overwhelm for everyone, okay? So routines versus projects. A routine is something that is done on a certain, like every Monday, or once a week, or once a month, or once a quarter. It is something they will rinse and repeat, okay? A project is a one-time thing that once we do it, we check it off and we're never going to do it again, okay? What we need to understand first is what routines are they currently doing and how many hours a week do their routines take? When I ask a new client this question, they have no idea. They're like, well, she does X, Y, Z. And then I throw a few more things at her, right? So what you want to figure out is exactly what they're doing on a weekly basis and how long those things take, right? So if they're working on social media, right? Okay, that might be 30 minutes a day, okay? They might work three days a week. So we know that's an hour and a half of routines on social. Okay, maybe they're checking email for you. All right, well, how often? How many times a day? For how long? Roughly. I know that checking email could be 20 minutes here and then an hour there, but give an idea. So what will happen is if you've hired somebody to work 20 hours a week and you now notice, oh my goodness, they're working 16 hours of routines a week, that means they only have four hours left over to work on projects, okay? So- What you need to understand and what you want them to understand is your routines are non-negotiable. So if you've decided there are 16 hours with routines, this is a, they must 1000% get done every single week, like no reason behind why it wouldn't happen. There is no project that would ever trump their daily, weekly, monthly routines, okay? Now from there, you understand there's only four hours left in their week and they understand. They also understand the order of importance and the priority, okay? Now, uh, to give you an example, a project might be fixing the homepage on the website. Like once you do that, you might not touch that for years, right? A routine might be check email every day at noon. See the difference? Okay, so the question is, or I should say, If somebody is working 20 hours a week and they've got 16 hours worth of routines, but you've thrown so many projects at them that really, let's say it's probably, let's say if they work 20, it's like 30 hours worth of stuff you're giving them. So here are two things that could be happening. Number one, they're working the 30, but getting paid for 20. You have this amazing A player who doesn't want to disappoint you, who's doing the work Okay, they're working 30, but you're paying them for 20. Guess what happens? They're not going to last long. They're going to burn out. They're going to become resentful. They're going to quit and up and leave. And they're going to do it with like no notice. You're going to find out today they're they're quitting immediately. And you're going to be like, what? Why? You're going to have no idea. So that's your option one of what could possibly happen. The second thing is they are stopping at their 20. And maybe they're not getting some of the routines done. 
or they're not getting some of the projects done, they're starting to kind of cut corners just to finish, right? Because they want to look good in front of the boss. But what's happening is you don't know that they're missing a few routines here and there or that they did that project kind of halfway because they ran out of time. So there's just never anything good that comes out of overworking your team. Okay, now here's another tip that you want to do with this. Every 90 days, you want to do a time audit to help improve efficiencies. If you're inside of Well Oiled Operations Mastery, We have a time audit, not just for the CEO, but for every one of your team members, okay? You want to be using that. If you're using our spreadsheet, everything is formulated. You just got to plug in a few things. It's going to pop everything else out for you. You want to look at that and start to assess their efficiencies. Now, here's what's interesting and something to remember. When you audit them for the first time and they say, hey, I've got 16 hours worth of routines, it is possible 90 days from now, that 16 has turned into 14. Why? They're getting stronger. They're getting faster, right? Um, It is also possible that maybe AI has taken something over and made it easier for them. I've recently started using AI for a couple things and it has literally saved me so much time by having that tool. So something that took me three hours before might take me an hour and a half now. So by auditing every 90 days, you start to look for efficiencies and you start to see what's happening. Maybe in that last 90 days, you threw a few more things at them that were routines and that 16 hours turned into 18 hours. This is information you need to know, all right? You need to know their hours, and so do they. Now, when everybody's on the same page, it's going to be a whole lot easier. And here's what's going to happen. It's going to slow down your ideas. You might think, oh, no, I don't want to slow down. Like, that's not a good thing, Stacy. Trust me, I like to move fast. I'm fully aware. But when you slow down, it gives you the opportunity to be even stronger, to be more selective, right? I will never forget when I was about to have my first baby, I was thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to lose so much time. This is going to be horrible. And what happened was I lost so much time. I had to be more selective. I had to be more thought out. I had to be more um, intentional and my results got better. So when you have to get, like, when you see this, right, and you have to figure this out and have to prioritize what you're actually delegating, you'll delegate the good stuff. And all of a sudden, you'll be delegating less and they'll be getting better results. Trust me, it happens every single time. So with this, I have a board on my project management software. If you're interested in what project management software I'm using, you can DM me on Instagram project management, and I will be happily sharing that information with you. Now, with that said, on my project management board, I have something for every one of my direct reports, right? So if the director of marketing reports to me, his says director of marketing projects, director of marketing routines, right? So on these boards, he's got every Monday do this, every Tuesday do this, every Wednesday, every first of the month do this, every first of the quarter do this, right? Those are his routines. On his projects, these are marketing initiatives we want to do that might be set it up once and we're good, meaning update your LinkedIn profile. Again, He's probably going to do it once. Now, yes, you could check it out once a year. It could be a routine. However, it might be a bigger project you do right now, and then you're done with it, okay? So I want you to just take this for a test drive this week. Start to pick one person on the team, explain the routines versus projects, start to put it in place, and then I want to hear from you over on Instagram what has happened. I want to hear the results, the changes, because you will instantly see it. And let me tell you, your team member will instantly feel it. And oh man, when they start to feel that you know you've been overloading them, they are going to just have such a relief. And the way that they are going to show up to work is going to be so different in a good way. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode, Projects versus Routines. It is going to be a game changer. 